Genius Kids. Cultivating Love for Learning. Lesson 12 Air and Water. Knowledge Acquisition. After completing this chapter, we will be able to know about the various layers of atmosphere. The composition of air. Exhibit the properties of air and water. Soluble and insoluble impurities. Impurities can be removed. Various ways of purifying water. Air and atmosphere. The earth is surrounded by a thick layer of air, resembling a protective blanket. This blanket of air around the earth is called the atmosphere. This layer of air is held in place due to earth's gravity. We would not be able to live on the earth without atmosphere. It protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun by absorbing them. It traps some of heat of the sun while reflecting most at it. Layers of the Atmosphere The atmosphere is divided into five layers. 1. Troposphere 2. Stratosphere 3. Mesosphere 4. Thermosphere 5. Exosphere 1. Troposphere It is the lowest layer of the atmosphere of Earth. It extends to a height of up to 15 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. About 80% of all the air of the atmosphere is in the troposphere. Water vapor is also present in this layer. All weather takes place in this layer. 2. Stratosphere It is the second layer of Earth's atmosphere. It contains ozone layer which protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Mostly aircrafts fly in this layer because it is quite stable for them. 3. Mesosphere It is the third layer above the Earth's surface. It prevents small rocks called meteoroids, coming from space, from reaching the Earth's surface by burning them. These rocks can cause destruction on Earth if they fall on it. It has electrically charged particles, which help radio to work. 4. Thermosphere It is the fourth layer above the Earth's surface. The International Space Station ISIS, orbits within this layer. 5. Exosphere It is the outermost, fifth, layer above the Earth's surface. It contains very little layer of air. It helps in long-distance communication through radio, mobiles, etc. Components of air We already know that air around us is a mixture of gases. Like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and many other gases. 1. Oxygen It comprises almost 21% of the Earth's atmosphere. It is the most important amongst all gases present in the air. Animals and humans both use it for respiration. It is also necessary for burning. It is used to burn the absorbed food inside the body to get energy. 2. Nitrogen It is the most abundant gas and comprises 78% of the air. It cannot be taken directly from the atmosphere and utilized by plants and animals. Plants take in nitrogen from the soil with the help of bacteria, as they can't take in nitrogen directly. They get it from the food they eat. 3. Carbon Dioxide It comprises around 0.03% of our atmosphere. It is an important gas for plants. Green plants make their food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight by the process of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is also important to maintain the Earth's temperature. 4. Other gases Beside oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide, many other gases are also present in very small quantities in the air like argon, neon, helium, etc. 
Argon is used to fill electric bulbs. Neon is used in glow signs. Helium is filled in gas balloons. Besides these gases dust, smoke and water vapor also present in the air. 5. Water vapor. Air also contains water vapor. Most of the water vapor present in the atmosphere is formed as a result of evaporation. 6. Smoke and dust particles. Smoke comes out from factories and vehicles. This smoke mixed with air. Little particles of dust blow and mix in air. Therefore, dust is in the air. Properties of air. We already know that air cannot be seen. It is also colorless, tasteless and odorless. We can only feel its presence only when it moves. Let's discuss some more properties of air. 1. Air occupies space. This can be easily observed when we blow air in a balloon. It gets bigger. Why? This is because the air we fill starts occupying space inside the balloon and it grows in size. Air takes up space in the balloon. The process of filling air into any expandable object is called inflation. It can be filled into things like mattress and football. 2. Air has weight. Air is made up of matter, therefore it has weight. This can be easily seen by comparing the weights of a deflated object with an inflated object. Inflated object will always be more heavy. This shows that air has weight. Activity 1. Take a thick, long stick and tie a string at its center. Then take two balloons of the same size. Fill both the balloons with air so that both of them are equal in size. Now tie one of each end of the stick. Now burst one of the balloon. The end with the balloon will come down as it contains more air. This show air has weight. 3. Air exerts pressure. We know anything that has weight exerts pressure. Air also has weight and exerts pressure. Air exerts pressure in all directions. The pressure exerted by air is necessary for many activities like taking in a liquid through a straw, filling ink in a fountain pen, filling in a syringe, etc. 4. Air is needed for breathing. All humans, plants and animals need air to breathe. Air keeps us alive. Press your nose and close your mouth. Wait for some time. What do you feel? You start feeling uncomfortable because you cannot breathe without air. 5. Air is needed for burning. Air consists of oxygen which supports burning. This can be seen with the help of a simple activity. Activity 2. Take two candles and light them. Cover one of the candle with an empty glass. After few seconds you will see that the candle has go off. This happens because covering the candle with a glass cuts off the air supply. Since the other candle gets a continuous supply of air, it keeps burning. This shows that air is needed for burning. Water like air, water is also essential for life. It covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. It is found on the Earth in different sources like seas, oceans, lakes, ponds, etc. It is found underground and in the air too. Rain is the main source of water. We need water for day-to-day -day requirements like drinking, cleaning, cooking and washing. Impurities in water. As the water flows it carries with mud and sand particles along with disease causing germs. Hence, water becomes impure. We can get rid of these impurities by employing simple techniques and obtaining clean water for drinking and other purposes. Based on their nature, 
impurities can be of two types. One, soluble impurities. Two, insoluble impurities. One, soluble impurities. Impurities like salt and some minerals that can be dissolved in water are called soluble impurities. They cannot be seen. Two, insoluble impurities. Impurities like mud. Twigs, stone, etc., that do not dissolve in water are called insoluble impurities. They can be seen. Purification of water. We use different purification techniques to purify water depending on the nature of the impurities. One, separating soluble impurities, we should always drink clean and pure water. Soluble impurities can be removed in the following ways. I. Evaporation. On heating water changes into water vapor. The process that changes the water into water vapor is called evaporation. This is a very simple method of separating impurities like salt from water. 2. Distillation. Distillation is another process of water purification. It is carried out in a special apparatus consisting of a round flask, a water condenser, and a receiving flask. In distillation, contaminated water is heated until it starts boiling. This boiling water slowly changes into steam leaving behind the impurities in the flask. The steam then passes through the condenser and gets cooled, thereby turning back into liquid water. This clean water gets collected in the receiving flask. 2. Separating insoluble impurities. Insoluble impurities can be removed in the following ways. I. Sedimentation. Setting down of heavy insoluble impurities present in the water is called sedimentation. In this method let water stand for some time. Impurities that are heavier than water settle at the bottom. This method is used to remove sand from water. 2. Decantation. When the insoluble impurities settle down at the bottom, the water above become clear. The process of pouring out the clean water into another vessel is called decantation. 3. Filtration. The method of purifying water by using a funnel and a filter paper or filter cloth is called filtration. The clean water obtained in the beaker or container is called filter. The insoluble impurities left behind on the filter paper are called residues. Nowadays some households use water filters and purifiers to clean drinking water. Continuous Review Air around the earth is called the atmosphere. Troposphere is the first layer above the Earth's surface. The ozone gas present in stratosphere. It protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Mesosphere has electrical charged particles, which help radio to work. Exosphere is outermost layer of the Earth's surface. It contains very little layer of air. Air is a mixture of many gases in which oxygen 21%, nitrogen 78%, and carbon dioxide 0.03%. Green plants make their food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight by the process of photosynthesis. Most of the water vapor present in the atmosphere is formed as a result of evaporation. All humans, plants and animals need air to breathe. Water covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. Rain is the main source of water. We use different purification techniques to purify water depending on the nature of impurities. We should always drink clean and pure water. Like, share and subscribe.